Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, a long-awaited edition of Post Perez because we have not done one of these in I don't know how long. But hey, everyone, it's, it's me, it's WH Park, and uh, joining me today uh, on this month's episode is Karen Peterson. Karen, how are you? Good to see you again, WH. Things are good. He's such a booty just now. Oh, he's such a booty just He's such a booty. It's I think been the last a long time no see. Uh, uh, what August? G1 yeah, the G1 with finals. John? Yeah, that was it. I mean, that was it. Yeah, we haven't done anything since then, other than like random chit chat here and there. That's right. <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's September flew by. We're now in the month of October. It's a busy month for the, for the world of Japanese wrestling, for, for the world of pro res. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about quite a few things today. We're going to preview three big New Japan shows. Uh, what do we got? We got Destruction and Ryo Goku. We have um, Royal Quest 3 in the UK. And then we have in, in not your neck of the woods, no, really, but in 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 America, uh, on, Fighting Spirit on the continent, <laughs> on the continent, Fighting Spirit in in Vegas is coming up. These all look like very interesting shows. We'll talk about the cards for each one, and then we'll give our kind of thoughts and and possibly predictions. But what's going to happen on in some of these matches, uh, including who is the new fifth member of Just Five Guys? Who's going to be serving me fries uh, for, for, come uh, October 9th? I we shall see. You, it is not me. I am not. It's actually. not you. You're not the fifth guy. I am not the fifth guy. All right. Well, I mean, what a what a letdown then. If uh, I if mean, it's not you, or Karen. it could be what someone who is X could possibly say. Who's to say? Well, we'll 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 talk about that because we're <laughs> it's, it's it's actually thanks to you we're we we're, we're talking off air and and in in like some of our topics are going to dovetail into one another. So that that's one of them is who is the new fifth guy we'll find out karen's gonna give her predictions and uh we'll we'll then we'll, uh, if you know like you're out there if people want to comment in the comments below yeah yeah talk about talk about who you think gonna be the new fifth guy i i personally don't care because i hate this faction because <laughs> i i think they've got a stupid fucking name and uh sonata i'm sorry i i know you're a big fan here but sonata is absolutely boring me to tears as champion sorry eric marcotte i know he is also a massive i say a sonata fan as as a member a long-standing card holding member of the sonata hive i've 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 I ha had a very difficult time with him as champion and bruce and i have gotten unpacked this at length but it, i hate the feeling that sonata's reign as champion is all about putting naito over at the dome that's, yeah, that's 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 all. Like, I feel like they're just treading water. The defense. That's a lame duck him. main event for Wrestle Kingdom, in my opinion. Like, well, you, then he has to lose. He has to lose the evil on Monday. <laughs> so that's, that'd be. Listen, I I I'm not excited about uh, <laughs> this uh, this uh, you know uh, Sonata being the champion, but that but putting the bell on evil would be uh, like exponentially uh, a worse idea because no one will pay. No one casually will pay to go see Naito versus Evil in the in the Tokyo Dome. Like I sadly I, agree. You know, so I don't care how popular Naito is. I like Naito. I'm not a Naito naysayer or you know, like you know, the, you know. But I'm also not a Naito truther. He's not popular enough to fill the dome with fucking Evil. He's not even popular enough to fill the dome with fucking Sonata. I'm sorry. I like Sonata. I've always been a Sonata fan too, but. It is what it is. It's 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 also the booking. The booking of him as champion is, is pretty atrocious, I have to say. But we're we're going to talk about so also. <laughs> uh, we're also going to talk about uh, stardom. We're going to talk about Suzu Suzuki becoming uh, the 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 new uh, five star Grand Prix champion. I'm going to give my thoughts about the format of this tournament, Karen, because I I I really think they need to change how they do their five star Grand Prix. It, it's ridiculous. Yes. How many people yes. were in it? Thirty six, some shit like that. It, it it was a very it was their largest to date, but they ended up with four people who have dropped out or or ended up with injuries Ridiculous. afterwards. And it's it's two, four of their most popular talents as well, which is such it's, a shame. It's t it's two months long this tournament. Yes, it, it it should be two weeks long and should have a third of the partic number of participants in it because if you have everyone in the promotion in the tournament. It's not. It doesn't really add prestige to it. It doesn't. Yeah. You. Sh it should be an elite 
group. Not everyone gets to play ball. I'm sorry. That's they, this house. They had about work. a third of the girls who had to sit out on it, but it was it's still it's just sometimes it just felt like there were too many people. And right, okay, you know what? Two Thanks. weeks, like two, three, three weeks max, but two, two weeks and and 16 people. That's how many people should be in a fucking tournament. That includes the G1, by the way. OK, <laughs> G1 shouldn't be like 36 fucking people in it either. OK, I've, I've already talked about the G1, but I well, won't it, rehash it that. Defense, at least they have the, the 15 minute time limit. No, not when you have like it over two months. No, that well, doesn't matter. Yes. That doesn't that is matter. true. That does not matter. We're also going to talk about, I think, probably my my most interesting topic is going to be um, Katsuhiko Nakajima, has, uh, given his his uh, his notice to Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, he's he's no longer going to be a contracted Noah wrestler, but he is going to go freelance. But I I don't think that status is going to remain like for very long. I do think he's probably going to sign a contract with a different company down the line that's just my prediction i I think he's going to get a lot of like dates with other companies first just to like you know because that's what he was before when he was like in his teens when he was with kensuke and they were traveling all different promotions before he finally settled in pro wrestling no for almost like what 10 years he he signed in what 2011 or something like that wow for, he's been he's been there for a long time. Well, we'll I'll get to my notes, but yeah, he he's gonna leave, and I I think it's a very exciting time for him. I think it's a very exciting time for any place that he shows up. I have my thoughts of like kind of dream matches I would like to see. We'll talk about that. We get to that topic, and finally, and this is the, one of the topics that that we're we're gonna maybe dovetail into is Yuya Uemura has has seemingly finished up with uh with with Impact Wrestling. Uh, he's he's ended his. Uh, incredible tag team with Joe Hendry, unfortunately. Uh, unfortunately for John Cena, who I know was a massive fan of their entrance. Because uh, he, <laughs> uh, he would send me gifts and, and links to this fucking entrance. And uh, I was just like, John, you need to calm down, my friend. You just need to calm down. I said to John, I said, did you see like uh, Adam Copeland, a.k.a. Edge, showed up in AEW, Karen? Did you see this? I I saw the 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 note that he left on the refrigerator because Beth posted it on Instagram because I did not watch Wrestle Dream on Sunday, but yes, I, I did. Saw you watch? The, did you watch Dynamite or wherever? I saw a he video did his of uh, it... the the reunion that did not go, of course, as according to plan because I, I, someone I sent it. Uh, I I sent I sent it to uh, I sent uh, the clip of that to Sino. And I said, this will be us when we see each other again in real life. He'll be Adam <laughs> Copeland. He'll be Christian. And if you've seen the video, you know exactly what I mean. He, he got a good laugh out of that. But anyways, <laughs> yes, we're going to talk about John Cena favorite, Yuya Uemura. At, uh, probably maybe not at the end of this episode, Karen. Probably a lot sooner. <laughs> but let, it, let us get into uh, uh, today's topics. We're, we're going to get my notes up here. Hold on a sec. Let me just fix this here. Okay. So let's let's start off. Big show. Uh, probably one of the big shows in New Japan's calendar. Coming up on October 9th, it's Destruction in Ryugoku, Kokugi Khan. You know, have you have you been to you haven't been to Sumo Hall, have you? I have yet to be gone okay. to Sumo Hall. I've, have, you, I, have, you ever, have you ever gone to the Ryugoku area? No. It's it's a fantastic place. To, to, to see there's a museum there right next to sumo hall i would recommend there's also like a lot of like a lot of a lot of good restaurants in that area including i was, ask, I was like i need the, the culinary racks before i go back next time so there's a there's a, a great little uh nepalese uh, curry restaurant hidden in the uh the alcoves of of ryogoku uh, near the station and then there's the uh, the famous uh tonkatsu restaurant that uh Jojo Remy and Christine Remy took me too, and I I, oh, I took. I do, lo- I do love a good tonkatsu. And, and me, me, I we took a we took a whole bunch of people there, including John and Wei, uh, before the pandemic hit, and uh, they had they they all enjoyed the tonkatsu at this restaurant, which I will not I will not share the name of on on air because I don't want anyone else going there. <laughs> I'll let you know, <laughs> in private, Karen. Don't worry, I'll let you know in private. <laughs> but uh, all of you other people, WH, I want to know what the name of this tonkatsu restaurant is. But you're shit out of luck. I'm not telling you because I don't want to see you any of you there when I go when I return to <laughs> So, anyways, 
let's talk about destruction and real goku in in the sumo hall um uh, we're going to talk about these matches. Let's let's start at the beginning, Karen. Uh, I hope I have their order right. Uh, it's going to be uh, a six man tag to start things off. Just five guys, except now it's just four because uh, Yoshinobu Kanemaru, the, the master heel himself, turned heel and he joined the House of Torture. And uh, what a betrayal! What a betrayal to poor poor Taichi, his buddy here, Kanemaru left and then they have a they 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 have a slot to fill so it's going to be tai chi doki and x versus the house of torture of show yujiro takahashi and yoshinobu kanemaru who who could x possibly be karen i mean it is far past time that my son yuya urimura comes back from the war and goes back to japan the convenient firing of him in impact it just seems to fit all that well i just don't know if just five just five guys is the right fit for him no it's, it's not it kind of feels like beige curtains like a group like they they're they're doing well in the marketing scheme of new japan and they're very popular on like the the uh tv asahi uh shinichi champion programming that they have as a group but i I feel like Yuya needs something a little different because he's going to end up feeling just like Ren Narita and Shota Umino right now. They they need something to differentiate the three of them from one another. And Yoda Sichi, like Yoda Sichi is he's lucky. at least he, an Lij. It's yeah. it's something. <laughs> I, I think Yuya Mura, you know, I, like he, he for I think he's just being Hontai to to start and like kind of be adopted as someone's protege maybe maybe tanahashi's protege or, or and then just start you know beefing with like uh ren narita and and, and uh shota umino and and, and you know suji and you have like a four-way war between all these prospects these four the four top prospects of this company for the future and uh yeah so they're gonna make him a junior again or are they gonna let him be a no i mean he's pretty big isn't he he beats he's, up and he, he's he's filled out a lot. Yeah. No, I I think they they don't really care about juniors in New Japan. To be honest with you, um, you know they they have Master Wado and and that's all you need to know about how they feel about juniors. They they stick him with that gimmick still instead of like just letting him evolve to becoming himself again and just dropping that name altogether and make trying to make him a star. I mean, I'm I'm still surprised they you know like Hiromu's still a junior. I think he's eventually gonna go to heavyweight so there you go i i mean so yeah what do you think so you uh you is gonna be the fifth the new member of just five guys you will they go over house of torture in this match they kind of need to but i guess that means yujiro is the one eating the pin probably from taichi because i don't see any of them pinning show unless they're gonna have taichi pin shows and then they just ping pong the king of pro wrestling championship back and yeah. forth yeah I, I would imagine like kanemaru doesn't doesn't need to be pinned right now like you can have another Not match yet. down the line uh but yeah probably i would say you know miss mr uwfi tai chi uh will will defeat uh mr why is he still here yujiro takahashi so we'll say a win in the column for the just five guys here uh next up oh oh boy what a what a barn burner this is going to be tangaloa versus chase owens in the match i've dubbed why why am i being subjected to two of the worst performers from this year's G1 in a singles match, Karen. Why? Please explain. I, you're looking at the wrong girl. I don't book New Japan, so I couldn't tell you one way or another. I I kind of wish that this match didn't have a 30 minute time limit. 15 what you think minutes? it's gonna go 30 minutes? <laughs> I I am not gonna make a call on that either way because I learned my lesson with the monkey's paw. <laughs> Talking about wanting show to win a championship. I don't know what's going on, but I just I just feel like 30 minutes is way too much for a time limit for this match. I don't uh, like the, 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 the beef between Bullet Club between the two of them never ran that deep to begin with. So I I just don't know why they're what the I don't like, understand what the purpose of this match is other than to give both of them something to do. You know what my you know what my theory is is that uh they they saw there's a dip in 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 a merchandise sales and and concession stand sales, uh, you know, and before the show. So they thought we need a match that will that people will not care about, and that they'll go out to get like some food, maybe another 
cup of beer, maybe a hot dog, maybe buy a t-shirt or, or, you know, something else. Maybe some of these, uh, these lights that they like to, uh, have at, at uh, wrestling shows like that they've adopted from the, the, the idol world. Um, uh, that's what I think. I think it's to drive people. That's right. Where you go. That, that's it's to drive people. <laughs> No, yeah, we, we'll talk about no. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about no. Um, that's what I think. It's it's the the let's get people to the merch stand some more to buy more t shirts. Let's give them a match nobody wants to see, and that and that would be Tangaloa versus Chase Owens. Who's gonna win? Probably Tangaloa. I I I I don't know what the benefit of having Chase Owens win this match would be, but then I don't see what the benefit of having Tangaloa win win this match at all either. I I think it all depends on how. Tama versus David Finley and the, the strong open weight championship match between Hikaleo and ELP versus uh Coglin and Gabe Kidd shakes out. Right, like so like the the, the Grills of Destiny versus House of Tort. So, so, uh, someone in GOD is gonna have to eat a loss. And I, I don't know if they're gonna if they're gonna make it be Tama or if they're gonna just let ELP and Hikaleo be the ones. So well, maybe maybe it'll be a time limit draw, and then everyone in the building will be a loser. Karen, remember, I have to review this match with Bruce on Monday. Please don't do this to me. I don't put <laughs> it. What am I doing? I'm just saying the possibility. I'm not manifesting it to be true. I don't want. I don't want you to have your or my good friend Bruce Lord having to like watch a 30 minute fucking match with chase owens god what what a horrendous idea that is you know what's the word what's the word for hideous karen dasai that's dasai yes dasai dasai also means lame chase owens sangaloa her hideous lame no what what i'm being honest anyways next match los ingobernables de japan Shingo Takagi, Tetsuya Naida, Yoda Suchi, and Bushi. It's an eight-man tag versus the combined United Empire. Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, Hinare, and uh, and not Will Ospreay, but Callum New Newman. I guess he's the, the new member of, of the United Empire here. You just keep bringing in people. I, I, I get, I'm guessing he's another junior for them. From yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, they got a perfectly good member in, in Robbie Eagles. Right or no? He went to. Sorry, I no. always forget. He went to TMDK. <laughs> Robbie went to TMDK. Francesco right. Akira I... and TJP are in the United Empire. Yeah, why? Why you couldn't put like TJP or 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 my 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 good friend uh, the good Italian boy uh, Akira Francesco in this match? You need to bring someone I new don't know. in. Maybe they maybe bookings. I don't. They are doing visa stuff i don't know i saw francesco akira a couple a couple of months ago at, live in toronto he was wrestling for demand lucha oh yeah That's he's good. he's taking a lot of bookings he's working all he's working canada he's i'm sure he's down in mexico in america so if you get a chance to see francesco akira live people i at, at your local indie i i i recommend taking uh taking it up uh, he's he's a fun person to watch live but yes uh yeah, so there's the beef continues. Lij versus the United Empire. Um, I don't know what's gonna happen. Who's gonna win this match, Karen? Uh, I I really don't know. Uh, maybe 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 Shingo because I, I I don't want Naito to be in the him and Jeff Cobb just swirling the drain about who's gonna work work the dome because they they already buried the hatchet on that one. But I'm guessing mm. it's either. Shingo or one of the big guys is going to squash Bushi. <laughs> maybe him, Yoda Suji. The third row. <laughs> All right, so maybe Yoda Suji will pin Hinare, so or that Calum if or, or no, but if Hinare wins the the strong open weight title from Eddie Kingston, then 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 uh, Yoda Suji will have a way to first, first can, can, can say, hey. I beat you in that match in, in Sumo Hall. I want a shot at that title if if he beats if he beats Teddy in the match, and uh, we we don't know if that's going to happen. But you know, Eddie does have the ROH World Title, so I don't think that's on the line. I just think the strong open weight title is on the line. So yeah. if Hanari wins that belt, it'd be a I think it'd be good for him. I think he needs something like that, and yes. it's okay because Eddie still has. Still has his ROH World Title that he won from Claudio, so it's it's it, it works out. I I that's what I think. I think Hanari will win the the open weight 
title and and then you know yodasuji will challenge him for that down the line sometime before the end of the year i'm here for it iwgp junior heavyweight tag team championship the bullet club war dogs <laughs> so just call them the war dogs why do you have to call it the bullet club still anyways drilla maloney dan maloney and clark connors who are the champions this this this, this tag team title just put hot potatoes all over the place i think um uh, taking on the former champs not the not the champs that they beat because that would have been that would have been catch 22 right yeah who beat these guys what, what's their name kevin knight and Kushida. what's their tag team name again karen international jet Setters, i think that's right the international jet Setters. so the the yeah. current champions and the the former uh champions two two reigns ago are gonna are gonna meet in this match and uh yeah it should be fun I, I i think kevin knight has really come through as as a junior teaming with especially in this tag team with Kushida. so i i'm gonna go on a limb and say uh, international jet setters are gonna regain the titles they're gonna have some more matches with catch 22 and then defend against uh, the junior the junior war dogs here and then i mean just kind of hot potato the the junior title junior tag titles all over the place like what they used to do with with young bucks and and more city machine guns and and the, no not sorry not the machine guns the time splitters kushida and and alex shelley and just hey you know just keep and it alive junior tag league coming up after this series there go. so there you go so there you go i think they're just gonna have have it be you know go to go to international jet setters and maybe have it defended in impact wrestling because that's kushida's kind of home in america is yeah. impact wrestling so uh yeah that should be I, I think that'll be a very good match i think that's something that uh will will stand out uh when 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 the dust is settled of, of this whole show uh a best of seven series karen i i was not aware that there, there was a best of seven series not between any two two people but between a whole two entire factions seemingly is that correct yes so it's hauntai ha and strong style <laughs> so but it's specifically shoda umino master wado and yuji zingata as a trio correct in a best of seven series against the the trio of strong style minoru suzuki el desperado and Ren Rio. This comes this this kind of stems from like what happened at the G1 Climax Finals card, as I recall. There's like they were all getting in each other's faces, up in each other's yeah. grills, as 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 the kids say, right? So <laughs> uh, what, is, what is what is the current as of as of this recording, Karen, what is the current score in in, in this uh, series? Do you know? I can genuinely say I have not kept score because I have not watched the uh, the the significant number of house shows they've had leading up to this event. I, I, I as I recall when I was doing research, I do believe it's like two, two and one. So they're like almost tied or something like that. There's like or they have a draw, at least one time limit draw or something like that amongst amongst their uh, their matches. So. I do not know if this is the seventh match in the series or not, but uh, we—I I can't imagine how they're going to continue it after this destruction show. <laughs> why, I, I, or why I, do we I continue? I sincerely it? hope that this is the final. What well, says best of seven series final? So this is the last match. Okay, this is the last one. Okay, this is the last one. So what? What? What about? What are your predictions? I—I I do think it, it has to be something involving Narita and Shota. I, I, I would book it to be Ren defeating Shota to give kind of him like, uh, you know, Shota more kind of uh, saltiness. You know, he, he can't get the big win. I, I do think he, I think Narita needs it more than Shota yes, does. I agree. Um, so I, I, I would say that, you know, my heart and my head both say Ren Narita will get the pin on Shota Umino in this match or Master Wato. Not Yuji Nagata. That that would be good if yeah. he got it on Yuji Nagata. That would be a good nice rub. And, and you know what? Nagata would be more than willing to put over young yeah. Renarita. I think so. I mean, um, I wouldn't mind see like if that were to happen, I wouldn't mind seeing a singles match between Ren and Nagata purely out of morbid curiosity. No, I think it would be good. I think you know Nagata. He's smart. He works to his age and to his yeah. experience, um, and so he doesn't try to do anything like. Like he did like 20 years ago. He's very yeah. smart. And he, he was never really a high flyer or anything like that. So it, it's okay. And he, he came off a nice, you know, run with the triple crown, you know? So 
I think he's more than willing to like say, Hey, I'm, I, I, let me have a match with, with Narita. You want me to give him the rub, put him over? He'll do it. So, uh, that would be good. I think that would be a great idea as well. Uh, next match, New Japan Strong Open Weight Tag Team Championship, the, the Bullet Club War Dogs, the heavyweight version, Alex Coughlin and Gabriel Kidd will take on the challengers of the Gorillas of Destiny of El Fantasmo, ELP, and Hiku Leo. And uh, I this could go either way, I feel. Um, I, I would assume, I think Coughlin and Kidd have have, a, have better momentum as a team. I think they should go over. Uh, I don't really see a future with Hikaleo and El Fantasmo as a, as, a, as a tandem. I think that El Fantasmo should be um, a singles wrestler. I think he should be going for um, the never open weight title, maybe the, the U S slash UK title down the line against Osprey, um, whatever happens there. But I'm going to, I'm going to say the war dogs are going to going to retain their championships in this match. I have a feeling they will, and they will have uh, some help involved. What do you mean? I, I, I ha- my gut tells me it's not going to be a clean win for the war dogs. Are they going to debut an X as well? And you no, remember? I just, I just feel like Clark and uh, Drilla might have some free time after their match to uh, assist in the 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 ringsides. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, cheating. <laughs> Cheating's the word I'm looking for. Are Are you I trying know. to imply that members of the Bullet Club would would? Do something I dastardly. I know. What? What? Uh, I, my, I can't my, stand my, my for the slander. Warm take for Bullet Club in 2023. They still cheat. They still cheat. You know what? I just want to see Alex Coughlin get Hikaleo up for Jackhammer. Yes. <laughs> that would be impressive. I want everyone I to do it do safely. It. I think he can do it. I'm sure he can. He's a very strong lad. That's this Alex Coughlin fella. I've seen him pick up Kratos and throw him. It, I, it's, it's going to happen. He, he, he does very well in the gym. I, I feel so. Uh, you know, I think this will be a fun match. I don't, I, I don't, you know. But I'm, I'm going to go with the War Dogs. I think the champions retain their uh, one of one of these many New Japan branded <laughs> championships in this company. But wait, there's more. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no. We're, we'll get to another useless title. The never open weight six man tag team titles will be defended as the reigning, uh, still reigning champions Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Kazuchika Okada will oh, take on the Impact Trio of the Motor City Machine Guns of Josh Alexander, Chris Haven. Uh, no, sorry, Chris Haven, Alex Shelley, who I believe is the Impact World Champion. Alex Shelley, that is think so and uh and josh alexander joined them i i do not think they're going to win because i think the program is josh is going to challenge for the title he never lost that is currently held by alex shelley um, yeah. who i also saw at the same demand lucha show that i saw Kira francesco at <laughs> he had a he had an excellent match with with a by a luchador by the name of Aramis, and uh, i hope both come back to demand lucha so i can see both live they're very fun but i'm gonna say i'm gonna say ishii Tanahashi Okada are going to retain because Josh Alexander cannot get along with Alex Shelley, the man he's going to eventually dethrone for that Impact World Title. Or Ishii and and Josh Alexander are going to be best friends and just walk off into the sunset together. No, because <laughs> Ishii doesn't like Tanahashi. I don't know what they're doing with these belts. It's it feels like they just need Okada and Tanahashi to have a project because they're not in a singles title picture right now. That's fine. I I like the fact that Okada's in the, got these. I'd rather the, him and Tanahashi were the tag champions. To be honest yes. with you, I'd rather that happen. But I I'm okay. I like this dynamic where Ishii is friends with Okada, but is not friends with Tanahashi. But he <laughs> begrudgingly, you know, accepts Tanahashi as his partner because you know because he's Tanahashi. He's awesome. Yes, he's a legend. Yes, he's the ace. He's he's oh, one yes. in a hundred. Did you know he's one? He's one in a hundred, Karen. Tanahashi. A one in a century talent. Yeah, that's I'm right. very yes. I'm very aware. <laughs> that's the type of really people. This man, this man is on a level of like, you know, Keiji Muto, Mitsuhara Masawa, Kenna Kobashi. That's this is the level that Tanahashi occupies in the history of professional wrestling. Okay. And and I don't think you're gonna find too many people who would disagree with that sentiment. But let, let's move on. let's move on to another never title. 
the never open weight title, the the singles title, uh, current champion, and he's been he's held this belt for a while now. It's David Finley, who I I, I really like the Rebel. I, I, I think he's one of the few things I like in the Bullet Club is is David Finley and and his shillelagh that he inherited from his his father, the great Fit Finley, one of uh, one of my favorite wrestlers of all time, and uh, he will defend that champ that title against the former champion, the man he took it off of. Correct? Am I correct in saying that? Karen? I believe so. Yes, and he's only defended. This is his second defense since then. Hey, you, listen, they got a lot of titles they have to put on these shows, Karen. Like, you can't I have every what? title being defended on every show. Like, you know, they got like 700 titles. They got to have, you know, can't have them all. If, they can, if they can have titles defended on Ring of Honor and AEW and Impact, they could have, they could find the time if they wanted to make it interesting. <laughs> Anyways, Dave Finley versus Tama Tonka. I, I don't see the point in having David lose the title. I think it, it, it's better that, you know, Tama, you know, puts him over again. <laughs> and and I don't I, I feel they need to find a different project or a different role for Tama Tonga, not the never open weight title. Like, I think maybe try to elevate him a bit more. I do think it's a bit tough because of his, you know, he's been in the company for so long. I don't know what you could necessarily do with him to make him feel fresh. And please, people do not say turn him heel again. No, that's that's that was a long time. I, going back to the book club would just be incredibly detrimental for for him. I, I do think maybe it's time for him and Tama to think him and Tanga to to think about maybe other pastures, other places to work because I I, I don't know what else they can they, either of them can still do in New Japan. Just collect a paycheck and fill out a fill out a card. I mean, if they wanted to make it interesting and not be be the IWGP tag champions again, they could put Tama in the strong open weight championship pool. Yeah. It would get him get him away from I mean, not that I don't enjoy him and David Finley wrestling because I love the the story of how it's like the tables are turned. You know, when, when Finley was a face, Tama was the heel and now it's like, you know, the shoes on the other foot for both of them. But it's just like at what point do we move, move past the story on onto something else? Because it shouldn't be for over a year and a half now. This is the only story they've had. Yeah, it. it I don't think it does David Finley any good as an emerging as as someone that they want to push uh, up the card. You, you get that feeling. I mean, he he's he, it's his, who Ghetto paired himself with is you know is with David Finley. So you think okay, I want to. His thinking must be, I want him to go up higher in the card and get established more with this never open weight title, and then move him on to other, other you know divisions, other like the U.S. title, the 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 the, the eventually the world title. I don't know if he'll ever win the world title, but getting that getting that mix eventually, right? So yeah. I don't think being you know losing the title to Tamatanga would be beneficial to him. I don't think it's something Ghetto would want to be tying himself to because he he likes to protect the people that he is associated with because it's Kokata, Jay White, and now David yep. Finley. So we'll we'll see. But I, I do think <laughs> David's gonna retain. also about him getting on the card and getting getting that paycheck too. That's so. that's true. Yes. Uh I do think he gets paid as a performer as well as the booker of this company. What a smart man. What a what a worker that ghetto Double is. Dipping. That's right. Uh so David Finley gonna retain. Uh yes. What do you think? Karen? Yeah. Uh, I, I I need Tama to move on to something different. Yeah. Whether it's being another, you know, maybe it's going after Osprey and the the uh, US UK identity crisis belt. Or, and Finley needs to start having more defenses. Yes. Like put him with Ethan, put him with Shingo, put him, put him with guys that are uh, heavily associated with that belt and yeah. make it ma interesting. Heck, give him a singles match against Kenta. Since Kenta may or may not be part of Bullet Club War Dogs or not, since we don't know like where, like him and Ishimori are kind of off on this little island away from House of Torture and War Dogs at this point. So, yeah, Kent Kent is like showing up more in uh, where is he? He's, he's, he's gonna the, be in he's, Ring of Honor. He's the he's Ring of Honor, but he's also the Defy Champion, and yeah, no one knows what that is. Come on, Karen. No it's one knows the, what the Defy title is. It's the Northwest. 
Why I didn't. I don't even know if that's. I don't even know if that's an American title or or British title or whatever. It's anyways. I think it's American and not Canadian. See, no one, no I, one knows. You use an asterisk. Know. I think I can't. If you, the only person who knows are <laughs> the only people who know. I can't tell you the only people who know definitely associated with post wrestling. Karen are John Pollock and Andrew Thompson. They're the only people who know where the where the Defy Championship comes from. Probably. Anyways. Uh, IWGP junior heavyweight title three way match reigning champ still <laughs> reigning defending champion Roman Takahashi he's got to lose this he's got to lose this belt at fucking Wrestle Kingdom uh, versus he, Leo Rush he's keeping the belt till Wrestle Kingdom <laughs> yes he's keeping the belt until Wrestle Kingdom versus Leo Rush versus Speedball Mike Bailey this should be awesome I mean I think his chemistry with all both these guys is off the charts. I don't know if Leo rush and Mike Bailey have been engaging in, uh, in any program together in new Japan or in other places, but my God, like the, they were the, in impact at the same time. I believe isn't, Leo I don't know if they being... would have fought. Okay. Like against each other. I, cause I don't, we're you know, who knows? When you need him. <laughs> you know, who knows? John freaking Cena would know. <laughs> But Hiro Takahashi will retain this belt, and I'm sure it would probably be one of the one of the top matches quality wise yes. on this show. This one, I, it's one of the ones I'm really looking forward to seeing. Is 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 this one? Um, I'm I make sure my <laughs> coffee and breakfast are done before this match starts. All right, here's the match I'm not looking forward to seeing, and that's the main event, Karen. The IWG World Heavyweight Championship match. It's a lumberjack match. Oh my god, what a what a concept, what an idea. Sonata, the d- defending champion, the the champion, even though he doesn't have the, the physical belt, because that was stolen by evil. Uh, and then who who are the Jumberjacks? Is it just going to be just five guys and House of Torture? Or is it going to be if, other wa- roster they, members as well? If they wanted to make it interesting, they'd bring out a lot of the roster. And just, if anything, just to beat down House of Torture the entire time. But You I know they used I to do... You know what they used to do for lumberjack matches, Karen? Some some promotions would have them with leather straps, and they like, you know, Beat hit them the down. Backs. Yeah, with Woo! with the straps, like a strap match. That would be better. That'd be if they all gave them leather straps. There's and, like, been a lot this. of handcuffing going on in this series between them. I don't know if they watched the the whole Roman Reigns Tribal Chief Sami Zayn arc. I, I just think got that's, that from. I think that's just ghetto, like showing his. Uh, his uh, intimate side, you know what I'm saying? Hey, we don't shame here. <laughs> I'm, not shaming. I'm just, I'm just pointing something out here. That's all. I don't, I don't shame. Whatever you're into, as long as between consenting adults, it's all good. It's all cool with me. I'll just say yep, that. Consent is rad, y'all. Um, I'm gonna say not, 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 not an exciting card overall, Karen. I gotta say this, this main event is, is, is no, no buys for me. I, I, I might not even watch this match. Uh, maybe I just listen to you and Bruce lament about how bad it is uh, in your review of it. I'm gonna call uh, you and be like, "WH." Yeah, I'm, I'm, I probably won't be answering that that phone that phone call. Uh, but I will say, okay, for me, the junior heavyweight title match, the the uh, uh, the best of seven series match, and the yeah the the junior tag tag team title match, I think will be will be fun. I think these are the matches that I'm. Most looking forward to seeing, and I think we'll we'll, we'll really uh, kind of deliver. I agree completely. You and I tend to be on the same page when it comes to picking matches, so I don't I don't disagree with any of those choices. That's right. There you go. So, so, so that like that, yeah. The the heart, you know, like the heart. Yeah, that's right. Like there you go. Royal Quest Three, October fourteenth. London Copper Box. Uh, they'll be returning. Uh, they'll be running another show there after uh, the the big All In uh, Rev Pro show that was just held there that many people raved about. That we know, Karen. A lot of the Grapple Boys uh, thought it was an amazing show. Um, I have Grapple. not seen it myself. <laughs> have not seen it yet myself. So I cannot say, but I trust their opinion. So, anyways, uh, this is going. We're gonna. We're just gonna. I'm just gonna go over the card. It's not a big card. You know, quite honest with you. What they've announced, I, they've only announced what one, two, three, four, five matches. I think they're probably going to fill it out on day of with some Rev Pro talent, um, and so they're not just they're just kind of announcing just mainly the the, the New Japan belts um, or the New Japan talent matches here. Uh, we're being headlined 
with a, a matchup that I think has always delivered every time these two have been paired together in, in singles matches, and that will be for the IWP US slash UK Heavyweight Championship. Hold on a second. Sorry, I had a cough there. Uh, will Ospreay defending his title against Zach Sabre Jr. I, I, I love when these two wrestle. I've never seen yes. a bad match between these two. It, I, they've wrestled against each other for so long that they know each other so well that it's it's a guarantee. I don't want to call it a safe match to put on to make to put as a main event for a show, but it's a it's a guaranteed one that's going to get everyone's attention and everyone's going to be talking about it afterwards. Yes, and I think it is a draw in in London in the United yeah. Kingdom. People want you know like this is a show where you should have uh you know a, a uk main event and and like i don't think there's anything better out there in the scene between two guys from the uk than osprey versus zack saber jr Absolutely. so the, if you get if you're going to if you're listening to this in uk you're going to see this live i uh, my hat's off to you i've never seen this live so um i would i'm very jealous to to anyone who's been seeing them live whether it's in it was i think it was the new one of the new beginning shows they they did a, they had a singles match and it was awesome and they i think they they probably have met in the g1 and i can't there's been so many g1 matches karen i can't remember them all but uh yeah that that should be that should be an excellent main event uh semi main uh tomohiro ishii versus shingo takagi first time outside of oh. outside of japan uh uk fans are you're real lucky you're going to see two of the Two guys who have excellent chemistry with one another just beat the shit out of each other. So if you like that kind of a match, which I do, as do I. Treat here. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi, Eddie Kingston, and Michael Oku will take on Jeff Cobb, Hinari, and TJP in a six man tag. That should be fun. Yoda Suji versus uh, Luke Jacobs of the Young Guns. Um, and then a uh, weird match, I feel, El Desperado in a match against the, the, uh, the former. Uh, <coughs> NXT, I believe UK was he NXT UK champion? I think he was Trent I, Seven. I have no interest in Trent Seven, so I no, me neither. Uh, Despy, just, 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 I don't, just, I don't care enough about him. In three minutes, to be and honest. move on. And yeah, uh, yeah I Des don't know. Despy like, deserves a better matchup for the show, honestly. But I don't book New Japan. But I, I'm, I'm curious to see how suji and luke jacobs do i don't know what their history in rev pro was if there is any um but again i i do love that they're actually weaving in you know rev pro talent and this is kind of how aussie open was introduced to the new japan audience proper when they did the first royal quest they, they before were, they, they jumped to GOD. <laughs> before well, they jumped to AW. <laughs> i guess health insurance is a big deal to some hey, people <laughs> you know what i can't blame them I can't believe having worked for a Japanese company. It is something that they are not. Very Table benefits is a very about. important thing. Yeah, they, it's not something that a lot of Japanese companies are not willing to give to people. So uh, this looks like a fun card. I think the you know the two top matches are worth going out of your way to to check out this show. So that's October fourteenth. Uh, yeah, I, I, someone's going to talk. I'm sure John John John's going to talk about. He'll he'll probably watch this thing. Uh, I don't know. Is there? Is there? A are you planning a review of this show, Karen? Well, Bruce Lord and I are going to be reviewing this show as well. <laughs> there you go, yeah, three Bruce and Karen. Bruce and I this month. There's one there more. We're gonna get to this it. There's one more. We're gonna get to it. Uh, <laughs> Fighting Spirit in Vegas, October 28th from Sam's Town in Las Vegas. You and Bruce are gonna review this as well. Yes. I, I am, alas, I am not going to Las Vegas, nor am I going back to Sam's Town for a show. So. We, we will watch the show on Saturday and the review. We are tentatively going to do it the fall, the, the, the next day on Sunday because of the time zones. Right. So uh, it's going to be headline and new Japan strong open weight championship. Eddie Kingston, the current champion will defend against Hanari who attacked him at the G1 climax finals show. And uh, yeah. And I think Hanari will win the title here. I think he needs it more than Eddie does. Uh, New Japan Strong Women's Championship defending champion Julia will take on High End. I'm not familiar with High End. What, what, what's her background? I am not familiar with her either. I just know that she's very popular on the U.S. Indies. And she does some work in the U.K. as well. Okay. So that should be – maybe that's going to be our sleeper match on this show. I, I think New Japan are not going to waste Julia on someone they don't feel can keep up 
with her Correct. In, in this in a match like this. So uh that's something to be on the lookout for. I'm looking forward to seeing this match. I I, I have yet to see Juliet to, in a strong women's title match. So I'm I'm looking forward to to seeing this. Uh another uh another female uh women's wrestling uh a tag match. Stephanie, uh, pardon me if I don't pronounce this correctly, Stephanie Vac Vacure. Vacare Vacare. Vacare. And Zeus Zeusix? Zuxies. I believe is how I believe that's how it's pronounced. And and def- def- uh, taking on the tag team of Luvia and uh, Johnny Johnny Robbie. And uh, I'm not familiar with any of these uh, these these four participants. Uh, do you have any knowledge about them, Karen? I believe Zuxis was in one of the May Young classics. If you want to go like do a deep dive on NX uh, pre NXT all that stuff. Uh, Stephanie Vaker has been she there. I believe they're all in CMLL. Vaker has been going to Japan and working with Ice Ribbon and a couple of the other women's promotions. But she's she and another woman, Delise, they were there for like like a month and a half, two months at a time. So there you go. Um, and speaking of CMLL, we're gonna have a CMLL uh, kind of mixed with a New Japan talent match. Atlantis, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Mystico. Uh, I believe this would be the Mystico who's not part of the Rush uh, Dragon Lee family, right? <laughs> That's, yes, that's, that is the Mystico that is not Karistico, which is the original Mystico who is related to Dragon Lee and Roosh. No, no, wait, isn't the second Mystico Drillistico now? And then the, Correct. The, the original Mystico is now something else. But th- this Mystico is not part this of that family. This is the third Mystico, maybe. <laughs> the need to start numbering them. But Please. also... Oh, it's a it's an eight man tag. So also Atlantis Jr., the son of Atlantis, not El Hio de Atlantis, but Atlantis Jr. will take on the 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 team of Rocky Romero, Tiger Mask Four. I don't like just calling him Tiger Mask. I think you have to respect every Tiger Mask that came before right. him. By the way, do you know who every Tiger Mask before? Uh, don't him. ask me that. You know I what? Do okay. This is the fourth iteration of Tiger Mask. Tiger could you, Mask Four. Could you enlighten? People sure. like me who don't know who the other so, three are. This this version started off in Michinoku Pro. He, he, you know, because Great Sasuke got hold of the gimmick somehow, gave it to this guy, and for excellent talent, very good. But the first first Tiger Mask, of course, the legendary Satoru Sayama, who revolutionized junior heavyweight wrestling in Japan with the Dynamite Kid. And then the second iteration of Tiger Mask was in All Japan for Wrestling. It was Mitsuharu Misawa, and then. The third iteration of Tiger Mask went back to New Japan, and it was Koji Kanemoto, and then the current version, Tiger Mask 4. So there's your little uh, thing. Do you know who all the Black Tigers were, Karen? I know Rocky Romero was one of them. He's like I think Eddie Guerrero was one. another one of them. So Eddie <laughs> Eddie was tig- Black Tiger 2? Yes, he's Black Tiger 2. The first is Mark Rocco, uh, Rollerball Rocco was the first Tiger ma- Black Tiger. Then it was Eddie Guerrero. He was awesome as Black Tiger. If you've never seen Eddie as Black Tiger, do yourself a favor. Go look for those matches. He was so amazing. Uh, third one was uh, Silver King. The uh, was the third Black Tiger. He was he's of course the brother of uh, Dr. Wagner Jr., who sadly passed away a couple several years ago. Um, and of course, the fourth version of Black Tiger was. Eddie, it was was Rocky Romero, and then there's some been some since they don't count because they're all shit compared to everyone else, the, compared to the previous four. But there you go. Um, yeah, what are, what are you looking most forward to on on this show, Karen? I I mean I am a shameless Julia fan girl, so I am very curious to see how the 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 audience in vegas react to them because i think they're going to absolutely love her but i i am as i'm unfamiliar with hyan's style and ring or her you know deep background i i am curious to see why she was selected largely because i feel like they're not i i don't like it when feuds are built on solely on social media i need more yeah like give me a press conference give me a video pack give me something wrestling should be Built and and fights should be built on television, not on Instagram or or Twitter or X or the fuck you want to call it these days. I shouldn't have to piece together everything. No, or wait until the day of the show 
pay the money and then listen to the commentary explain the story. Because, no. you know, in this economy, I can't afford to buy all the shows. No, so I, I need it, to be able true. to pick and choose. Um, I am also curious about the the women's CML tag match. And, of course, Hanari versus Eddie Kingston. Whew, that's going oh. to be... I think that'd be I a love, war. I do love me a beefy Haas fight. And I think yes. this is going to be... Definitely. A very robust serving of Haas fight. I, 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 I think Hanari... This is, like, the, the, the biggest match for Hanare, I feel the mo- one of the most high profile matches of his career outside of a G1. Um and I, I think yeah it's time for him to get belted up, you know, and why not this one, right? So I, I think and he, you know, like him and Eddie are probably just gonna go in there and just lay it in, beat the crap out of each other and it'll be great. I think uh yeah my prediction Hanari will become the new strong open weight champion here. Okay, so that that wraps up our our discussion about New Japan, or except for some some people were talking about some people at the Wrestle Dream post press conference were like asking Tony if he's buying New Japan for wrestling, and I, I read that and I was just like, why would you? Why would why would anyone who's an actual journalist? So I assume it wasn't an actual journalist who asked him this question, but some fan that they allow into these AEW press conferences karen asked, are you gonna buy in, are you buying new japan because you, you do a lot of work with them and it's like dude you can work with another promotion in wrestling without having to buy them like and tony just shot it down he's like no no he's like i, I think the question was like you said it's the end of an era it's like or the beginning of a new era i don't know what tony said exactly but it's just dumb i i i, I laughed when when i when i read this 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 blurb as much money as the Khan family has, I don't think they have the Bushi Road money to be able to afford to buy New Japan and Stardom, especially when their heaviest working relationship with Japanese talent is the Cyber Fight Group, mainly Tokyo Joshi Pro and DDT. So it's one of those things where I feel like a lot of it is fantasy booking on fans' parts because they want one stop shopping. They don't want to have to go to New Japan World and Stardom World and AEW yeah. and bring them all. They don't want to go to all. They want everything in one place, so they don't have to like seek out everything. Yeah. And it's it's just I just I see the discourse these days and I just scroll by it because it's not even worth my time until there is a press conference with someone saying, "Here's the press release. Here's the logistics." I I don't have the bandwidth to deal with some of the ridiculous things that I've been seeing lately. Well, let's move on to something that's not ridiculous, and that would be the the finals of the Five Star Grand Prix for 2023, and that would be um, Suzu Suzuki in the Red Stars block uh, taking on Micah from the Blue Stars block, and uh, Suzu Suzuki defeated Micah in 14 minutes thereabouts via pinfall using the Sky Twister Press. I watched this match just the other day, Karen. It was uh, it was excellent. I I I am a big fan. Susu Suzuki, I have been since ever since she joined Stardom via Prominence, um, and and started her feud with with Julia, who in real life she felt I think legit abandoned by when Julia jumped from my servant to join join Stardom, um, and uh, yeah, it's a Clint match. Like I I feel you know I mean you you wrote in your review on 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 postwrestling.com that maybe you don't know if the timing was was great for her to win it because there's so many people who've been in this company a bit longer that, that maybe have never won the five-star grand prix that maybe need the shot. I, I feel with this is Suzuki. My, personally, I feel like there's, there's lightning in a bottle that you got to yeah. capture with her at this point, because I think she is the most interesting person in that company. Who's not Mayu or Shuri or Julia yeah. or Tam Nakano. Uh, like, I think she's the person you have to say, among the the younger talent in this company, and there's a lot of younger talent in this company who, like Azumi and Starlight Kid, I think maybe those be two 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 of the examples you would think they've been in the company song. They've never won this this tournament. Um, but again, I think with them, they're they've been established. Like just to talk about those two specifically, they've been in the company for so long that it's okay. They don't need it right now because they're eventually. Yeah. I feel both of them are eventually going to become red belt champions at some point in their careers yeah so um uh, the hardest th- the hardest thing for me about like suzu winning the five star is that i understand the lightning in a bottle concept but at the same time it's giving me 
how they were handling Hana when they brought Hana in and she won the five star and they started they, they shot her straight to the top of the list and as a result it kind of if if you saw Micah's promo afterwards it shattered the confidence of like Micah losing to Suzu shattered her confidence like like to the point where she basically said in her backstage promo I don't know whether it's just being caught up in the moment or if she was serious or not she she apologized to Himeka who retired earlier this year, her, you know, her tag partner, her, one of her best friends. And she's like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I, I deserve to be here anymore. I don't know where I go from here. And it, it's that kind of, it, it's, it's the over, I don't know if it's the, the over blurring of, you know, you know, booking versus reality, or if it was just such a raw emotion in that situation is that I, it hurts as a longtime fan to see people that have worked so hard get passed over when they just bring somebody in. But again, last year when they brought Suzu, they, they put, gave Suzu a berth during the five star and she was sick for the first half of it. And they let her almost run the table the second half. I knew they had plans for her when she left prominence and then showed up in stardom literally two days later and hasn't worked anywhere else, but stardom related events. It's, I mean, it's safe to I say that it, it where they're what they want to do with it i just hope they handle it differently and not at the expense of the rest of the roster sure i understand i i i think it's safe to say that probably it hasn't officially been announced that it's pretty much a lock that she is going to become a contracted wrestler for yeah. stardom and that they are going to shoot her to the moon and i'm okay with it i because i think you have so many built-in stories especially between her and Julia that, you know, they're, they're okay with each other now, but my God, if you can build towards a big, I think you can build based on their natural, their, 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 their real history with one another um, that you can build to a massive gate between these oh, two yeah. down the, down the line. Right. During, during the, uh, the, like a ceremony where she got the trophy and the gown and the crown and everything. Suzu like just raises her finger and points right at Julia and Julia's on commentary crying and she just winks back at her. So it, they, they know that they're the collision course is getting set now, whether it happens, you know, three months from now or next summer or, you know, a year from now, they're, they're going to have that match and it's going to be one of the best matches that Stardom will have in their modern era. And, and like, you can always return back to a program with Micah, down the line, whether it's on if Micah stays, that's my thing. Is that it? it well, it, I, I mean, I, I got the impression like that. I get concerned. Sure, I fair enough. I, I feel though that that that's just to her. It's the storyline of like what she wants to convey, and then to to build a program down the line with Suzu for a, a singles match to maybe determine the number one contender for the red belt to for maybe for the red belt itself down the line like i do feel like that's her that susan's destiny is to become red belt champion i don't know if the white belt is in in the path of that of that ascension but you 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 have so many i feel fresh matches still with suzu like you know like singles matches and on her path Absolutely. to becoming a main eventer with you know uh, kamatani when she returns from injury with uh, utami with mayu with like uh hazuki you have like yeah there's so many people that she can have so many there's so, so that's the thing about stardom like i feel there's also like uh, there's too much good talent in there that it's, it's sometimes people get lost in the shovel right so but like yeah. she can have i like starlight like kid an embarrassment Momo. of riches <laughs> it's an embarrassment of riches it is um i i i, I think there's a, so much i think this is probably one of the best pickups they've made probably i think the yeah. best pickup stardom has made since shiri joined uh, the company officially and i would agree so I, 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 the thing is what I love, really love about Suzu Suzuki, especially in stardom is that she's so different from everyone else because she presents herself not as like a lot of the, the, the wrestlers in stardom present themselves as kind of like idol characters. Cause that's yeah. kind of like the origin of stardom was based around the idol of idol culture of like, you know, singing groups in, in Japan and, and Korea. Yeah. But she is a wrestler. She considers herself not to be like that. She's she always presents herself as a wrestler because and also like someone who's hardcore because she 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 loves doing death matches and has yes. since her ice ribbon days. So I I think there's she brings such a, a freshness of character 
to to the roster and like and and you know like personalities make make good matches right like it's not just about styles clashes but personality clashes she has both and and like i'm looking forward to see where she goes from from this point but she she has challenged tam nakano for the the red belt and when, when's that happening karen all right so on monday the 9th when you know destruction in real goku is happening stardom also has a show that day and on that day, the main event is Tam Nakano defending the World of Stardom Championship against Natsuko Tora. Now, during the five star, Suzu has got wins over both of them. So basically, instead of you punching her ticket to the main event of Stardom Dream Queendom on, the, on you know December 29th, the very last show of the year, she's like, I'm not waiting. I want I beat both of you. Whoever walks out champion on you know Monday. I'll be waiting for you in Osaka at Gold Rush in November. So, All right. so <laughs> let's talk about these two big shows. Um, so, Tam Nakano versus Natsuko Tora on October 9th, same day as Destruction. Uh, yes. Who's winning? See, it's hard because Natsuko had a very strong tournament. Whether or not it was clean wins or not, that's neither here nor there. But it's also in Nagoya, which is Tam's backyard. So it's one of those things where I could see Tam winning. But the red belt has eluded Natsuko for so long. I could also see Natsuko walking out with it with a little help from her friends, as it were. Right. Okay. So personally, I, I don't know if, if the red belt is ever going to be in the position of Natsuko Tora. Tora. Yeah. If 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 it is, I don't think it's going to be this year. I think yeah. they have other plans. So I'm going to say Tam Tam retains, um, and then Tam. So say it's Tam versus Suzu, Suzu in, Osaka. in Osaka. Like if it's Natsuko versus Suzu, I think Suzu. I think she's a cha transition champion. Yeah. I think Suzu beats oh, yeah. her for that belt. That, if it's that, if that's it's where I would, would was going with it. Was that if right. if, if, if if it's not Tam. Natsuko isn't keeping that belt very long. She's going to be no. one of the few that loses it on the first events. So let's say uh, if it's Tam, Tam versus Suzu Suzuki, what would you do? What what, what do you think is going to happen? And is it what you would do as well? It all depends on two things. One, how if Julia is still going to be New Japan Strong Openweight Champion at the end of the year. And two... If Kamatani's coming back, because I feel like those are going to be the two things that'll determine where the program goes after Osaka. Okay, so then if Tam and Kamatani doesn't have a time re a return table at, at, for just for clarity, right? Sake. So it's I, I really think Kamatani is going to try to get that white belt back when she when she does come back. You think so? I, I yeah why not I think it's something that she she because okay so let's say Tam Tam wins and then the natural rep match at Dream Queendom on Octo on December 29th I think the natural main event would be a rematch against Julia oh yeah that would that would be the natural like money drawing main event for that show oh absolutely they, but, they would just need to get the belt off of Julia yeah so I think they're, that's, they're not gonna, they're not gonna make easy. her a champ 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 <laughs> No, they that I think that's easy to do. I don't think anyone really, neither New Japan or Stardom really cares about the strong any of the strong titles. Um, but let's say Suzu wins that belt at in 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 Osaka. Her versus Julia at Dream Queendom. I think yeah. that would also be yes a money drawing match because you Absolutely. can. And I think Rossi Ogawa is very smart about promoting big matches about booking book big matches and drawing in history personal history uh whether it's in the ring or behind the scenes into these kinds of programs so i i could see it going either way like with tam and julia it's a given that they because they have such a strong rivalry uh in, in stardom yeah. over that belt as well but also like if it's suzu versus julia you have as we talked about earlier, the 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 the, the real life personal history between these two, and I think it, it's always been. It's also they have excellent chemistry in the ring. Absolutely. So, uh, what what would you what do you want to see? What do you personally want to see? 
personally, I'd want to see Julia versus Suzu. I, I, it's not that I dislike Tam. I think Tam's great and all, but I don't need to see her versus Julia again right now. I, I think Tam has done all she needs to do. As, yeah. As, I also think as, Tam might be. I, this is just me, me spitballing. I think she might be getting ready to retire or move on to something else because I, I just, I don't know. I don't know. She's done a I lot. Guess. She's done a lot, and there it really yeah. isn't anything she hasn't done. There isn't other than the high speed championship. She's held every belt. Yeah. In stardom, like there's nothing left for her to do. I, I, I don't think how she can top this reign. I think she's had a really good reign as as the red champion. Um, yeah, I, I, I I'm going to say, like, I think she retain. I think Tam retains against Natsuko. I think she defends against Suzu. I think Suzu, there's this very strong possibility that Suzu will take the belt off of her. If, if, if you, you think is true that, that Tam is going to possibly maybe retire from wrestling and, and go into becoming an idol, you know, becoming a singer. Um, who knows? Um, yeah. I think that is one of her ambitions. She, she yeah. records music. So, uh, so I, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to say it's Suzu versus Julia for the red belt on, uh, on December 29th at, at wrestle, uh, dream queendom, Stardom dream yeah. queendom show. And I, and I think Julia will put Suzu over. I know that's a very, a very, I don't, I don't think Julia needs the belt back right now. Fighting Julia is like fighting, like fighting for a championship. So. Yes, I, I, I think Julia can. I think eventually, I think Julia is probably going to become the IWGP Women's Champion. You know. Yes. If, if it's not, I, I have she, a, I have a list of people who are, who are supposed to ha be in that pool. Right. Like so, if she doesn't win, I don't think. Like I think I agree with you. I don't think if she needs to be the World of Stardom Champion. I uh, like Suzu could can will will benefit from the rub. Julia will be perfectly fine, and then they can say, "Hey, you know what? You're not the strong Women's Champion." We're gonna make you the IWGP Women's Champion, and then they can have her on the Japan shows in 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 Japan and across you know in Europe and 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 and, and uh, in the United in the United States and Canada possibly that would be great. So, any any final thoughts about uh, Suzu winning the five star before we move on, Karen? No, it was Let's... it was it was it was I liked that she gave mike or micah her flowers after the match like there was it, there was no it was all like hugs and sportsmanship and everything like that and she because she knew that micah w like was visibly crestfallen after that match so it, it, it felt good to see them like hug and smile and fist bump and all that i like the feel good stuff it made me feel good i cried in my coffee it's great it's fine it's great let's move on to our, our final topic and uh recently uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima, one of the one of the best wrestlers in the world. He's a, he's been a mainstay for Pro Wrestling Noah for many years. He, he's he's he announced he's going to be wrapping up with Pro Wrestling Noah. He's he's no longer being going to be a full time contracted wrestler. He's going freelance, which is kind of like him returning to his roots because that's what he was essentially at the beginning of his career. He first started off in a uh, uh, Wrestle Japan with un, under the tutelage of Ricky Choshu before. He before that company folded, and then he uh, aligned himself as a teenager. By the way, at the ripe age of about 15 years old, he aligned himself with Kensuke Sasaki uh, as Thank his tag you. team partner, <laughs> and <laughs> and as well as becoming basically his adopted son. Him and Akira Hokotu uh, pretty much adopted this guy as, and taught him everything they know about the business of professional wrestling. The dream. He is very they close with. <laughs> he is also very close, I believe, with the the two. You know, natural born sons of of Kensuke and Akira Koti, and, and you know who? Like, I think one of uh, one of Kensuke's kids, I think his oldest kid, married a Joshi wrestler. Yes. Do you uh, I know forget. who? I it's on the tip of my tongue, but tell tell me, Karen, please. Like, uh, former marvelous wrestler Rin Kadokura, and they just welcomed their first child. Wow! So Kensuke and Akira. Our grandparents. grandparents, that's amazing, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Nakajima leaving knows. I think the big thing, I think there's a lot of great matches he can have before he settles on a contract with 
another company. I'm going to just tell you, I think that company will be New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think New Japan will be insane <laughs> oh, yes. not to not to offer him something. I think they they he's 35 years old. There is so many so much there's so many money matches you can put this guy in. You know, of course the main one would be against Okada. I think a program between him and Okada. But in the meantime, like okay, he wants to do some stuff for maybe with Big Japan. He wants to fight the guys in the strong division of, of Big Japan Pro Wrestling. That'd be great. I would love to see that. He wants to fight Kento Miyahara. I think oh, personally, let's go <laughs> all Japan because Kent because Nakajima won their first singles match, the big singles match they've had recently, right? All Japan needs to contact him, Nakajima, that is, and and say, hey, we need you to give Ken we need to give Kento his win back. <laughs> he needs the rub. I think he'll do business. You build that for a sumo hall match. Kaseko Nakajima versus Kento Miyahara. You build it for like four months, three, four months. You have it in sumo hall or you try to run the Budokan. I would do it in sumo hall. I don't, I think the Budokan is a little too ambitious for, for, for all Japan at this stage in their existence. Has... And he does, he, sorry, he does that. And then mm -hmm. he shows up in new Japan for wrestling. Has uh, Kaseko Nakajima held the triple crown? No, okay. Kensuke has. He's okay. he. Oh, you can you can have that. He could beat Yuma Aoyagi, who's the current Triple yeah. Crown champion. Oh, because I know that you know New all Japan just loves putting that belt on people and making make making people who can elevate. It, you know, between putting it on Yuji Nagata, Satoshi Kojima. Like I I could I could if he's going to go like work there freelance, much like those guys were freelance as well in that situation. I can see them put, the, even if it's a short run, but put the belt on it. With, the thing is, Karen, there's not many even places that can afford him. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. There's not many places that can afford him. Unless, like, Glee would wants you to, like... him into New Japan, though? Would you make him a Wrestle Kingdom debut? Would you do a New Year's Dash? Uh, no, a, a, new, a New Year's Dash? I, would, I wouldn't put him on New Wrestle Kingdom. I, if, if, if anything, like, so he's going to finish. Let, let's just go over this. He's going to finish. He's going to have his last match for, for Noah at Corican on October 20th. Excuse me. Hold on. Uh, Go Shizaki drowning his feelings in crepes when the day of the announcement was very relatable. Yes. And then uh, uh, his final match will be October 28th at, at, in uh, in Fukuoka. So for Korokin Hall, he's going to team with his two uh, most famous tag team partners, Go Shizaki and Masaki Demiya, and in a six man Oof. tag against uh, uh, Masaki Mochizuki, Manabu Soya, oh. and, and Daiki Inaba. And, uh, well, Daiki is going to be doing the honors here for Nakajima. <laughs> yeah, like, brain the, the Hoss fight. Let's go. <laughs> uh, and then, so that'd be an awesome. I think that that'll be main event for Cork and Hall. For that, it would be an awesome show to be at for that match. And his last match in the company overall will be October 28th, and he will team with Goshizaki. Axis will will team for the last time in <laughs> Noah, maybe <laughs> against Naomi Chimarafuji and Takashi Sugiura. So another another Hoss fight here. And yeah, and he's he's 35 and he's just he says he just wants to like I've been in this company for a long time. I just want to like broaden my horizons. I want to have new new fresh challenges. And honestly, the like if I'm him, I, I'm 35. I want I want to make as much money as I can. That's not on the indies. I'm sorry, it's not. It's not for no. all Japan, it's not for big Japan, it's not for fucking Gleed. Um it's for New Japan. Yeah, it has to be for New Japan, and like with New Japan, he it opens the doors for him to do AEW and Ring of Honor if he wants to do that as well. Um, you can have like you know if he goes to a if he shows up in AEW for for a couple of shots, guess what? He could have a fucking match against fucking Katsuyori Shibata. <laughs> that would be fucking oh. awesome. Oh my heart! Oh, <laughs> all right. So yes, please I, and thank you. That and you know what? That won't happen. For whatever reason, New Japan is afraid to put Shibata in one of their rings. That's okay. He's having an awesome time in America, it seems. So you have as Nakajima he's getting paid and getting taken care of. I'm, I'm, they, I'm I think, I think Tony's it. taking care of him. So it's there. there you go. So health insurance, <laughs> health insurance. So you know he's he's being taken. I'm sure Tony's like, hey man, you want to wrestle in Ring of Honor? Sometimes in AW, I'll pay you. Don't worry about that. So Nakajima, New Japan. 
if he, uh, yes, I think he's got, so October, so November, December, he's got two months to like go crazy on the Indies if he wants. But I would say if I'm new Japan, I contacted him. I contacted him yesterday. I said, how much do you want? And what kind of schedule do you want? And we want you to wrestle full time for us because you know, who's, 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 Role he could fill, Karen Kodabushi. Yes. He could be what Kodabushi used to be for that company. You know, that's the, the the space that Nakajima could occupy. I think he's got a better head on his shoulders than Kodabushi does. He's a lot saner than Kodabushi is, a lot more sensible than Kodabushi is. I don't think you'd have as many problems, if at all, with Nakajima on your roster. He's a consummate professional because that's how he was taught because he was brought up in the business by two consummate professionals who are like his mother and father in real life, as well as in the world of wrestling. So Nakajima, New Year's Dash, showing up, starts a program with um, Ren Narita and Shota Umino, and, and eventually leads to a match Perfect. down the line. He's picking off with, all the company favorites with, one by one. With, with Okada. No, I mean, you, you, you put him over Shingo, you put him over... Like Sonata, you you definitely put him over Evil. You you have him build a match towards Naito that he wins that. Does, does he, no, you, he build a match with Kenta and do that? Ken, do the, no, do that no. deep cut. <sighs> okay, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Kenta's Kenta's not what he used to be. If you said this, I, to I me, know that's why I ask it that way because it's like I no. want to see it, but I want to see like Noah era Kenta come back out. I, I think they can work a match that Kenta could work in terms of like just kicking and slapping each other really hard and be compelling. Yes, because I think Kenta has the personality for that, but it's like you, you can't have him do that regularly, but you can have a one-off match. I think, yeah. yeah, maybe his first match, singles match, if he joins New Japan, is against Kenta, maybe in Osaka, at, at Sumo Hall, maybe in Ryogoku, maybe Yokohama, somewhere like that. But eventually you build him towards facing Okada. Like, I think that's where the money match is. And then along the way, you know, like everyone else, Naito, Ishii, you know, and then all the young guys. You. He's 35 years old. How old is, is, is Kazuchika, young Kazu? Uh, Kazu, is right I think now? it's 36. So they're about the same age. So both these guys, I, I mean, Nakajima has been relatively injury free. Yeah. So they're the same age, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Nakajima has been relatively injury free for most of his career. He he's he works a style where he doesn't really take that many risks or big bumps, and and he's a he's a crowd favorite. He has such name value. I think he's a lock for New Japan to like try to lock up, and they can they can afford him. Like you know, like Bushi Ro like I'm sorry, a cyber fight. He didn't. I don't think it's the money. It's it's lack of money that. He, that he, he left. did everything that he could do and no there really wasn't anything left for him to do he's been all the he's had all the belts yes the only place he hasn't had all the belts in is New Japan and his his father Kensuke was pretty much like he's held every title pretty much in in New Japan he was IWP heavyweight champion so I think that's maybe something that Nakajima looks at and says I want to be like, you know, Kensuke. I want to be IWGP champion one time. And like, if I'm New Japan, I sign him. I don't. I don't make that a later prospect. I make that a sooner prospect. You put the belt yeah. on him as soon as it's feasible. And and if you have existing plans, you change them for him. And then because it him him in New Japan is money. I really feel that. Yes, and they, they, it's one of those things that we've talked about before where it's the, they need to start thinking big picture for the next stage of the company. And while they have their three musketeers for the Reiwa era, there's a gap between your Tanahashis and your Naitos. Okada's kind of hovering in the middle with Sonata like over here, but then there's like a space. They need another person circulating around the Okada mid-30s range to help fill out what the future plans are. I yeah, mean, I think it should everything. also be Shingo. I think Shingo should also fill that role, but well, Nakajima yes. is perfect for, 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 for that role, as you're saying, Karen. Yeah. All right. So that that's what we'll, we'll find out come, come January, whether or not he is, if not earlier, if he's showing up in New Japan, I, I think it's, it's pretty much a given that he will eventually turn up there. Um, 
but yeah, maybe that wraps up this episode of the of Post Perez, and uh, hopefully we'll have another one uh, before too long. Um, but we yeah, we've been busy here at Post Wrestling. You, myself, everyone, you know, John Way, everyone else. So it's been hard to kind of coordinate doing one of these shows. But I had an awesome time talking with you, of course, as usual, Karen. Happy belated birthday to you, well, WH Park. You I've missed I've missed our conversations. Well, we'll we'll have more soon. Uh, you'll be you'll be doing quite a lot of conversation conversation lanes, <laughs> conversationalizing with uh, our own brew dog, Bruce Lord, for a bunch of New Japan shows coming up. And so pe- keep an eye out for that. Anything else to plug? Karen. Uh, of course, Dream Slam Monthly will be out near the end of the month. But other than that, I'm, I'm kind of laying low right now. I'm still kind right. of recovering from the G1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it gets I harder every totally year. Sense. So uh, my own plugs, I'll be... So it hasn't come out yet. It hasn't been recorded yet, but I'll be recording a new episode of The Long and Winding Royal Road Ooh. with uh, Poison Rana's Braden oh, Harrington. The boys. He hits his first time. I'll be doing it. I'm going to do it remotely from their from the BDE towers. So that'll be fun. I've only done one other like live recording that was with Damian Abraham. Uh, and so you know, Braden, I, I'll just tell people like it, it, we're going to talk about Terry Funk, the the Ooh. late great legendary Terry Funk. We're going to talk about his 1983 retirement match that did not last, um, but we're going to talk about his importance to Japanese professional wrestling as a whole, but also specifically to the creation and popularity of 1970s, 1980s, up until 1990s, all Japan pro wrestling. And uh, it'll be fun. And we're going to talk about his his famous retirement speech where he declared that Japan was Ichiban forever, forever, forever. Very much. And so one thing, yeah, <laughs> oh, Terry bless. Funk, like you and I, love Japan, love the, the culture, and love being in Japan. So, like, he's very lucky to have that and then we're gonna we'll we'll have that sometime before the end of october that'll be out on the feed somewhere i'm sure so like first time brayden will be on the show so i'm very excited to have a a conversation with him talking about all japan pro wrestling talking about the legendary terry funk mcu later we'll be returning uh this week this sunday Uh, i don't know when this is being released i think maybe sometime this weekend uh, we're we're recording this on October fifth, so I think probably sometime this weekend we'll be taught we'll be releasing this. But uh, me, Rich Fan, will be talking about Loki season oh. two. Karen, oh, we'll have back. you. It's 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 back. Oh, yes. No. Karen, we'll have you. We'll we'll have you on one of our episodes what? with uh, you, me, and Rich. And uh, also, <laughs> I think Rich and I will be doing a, a, a special deep dive for the Pro Wrestling Torch. Uh, we're going to talk about Ahsoka. As a as the series uh, as a whole, because it's it just wrapped up this week, and so he and I will be doing a, a deep dive into what was great about the Ahsoka show. Excuse me, hold on. And uh, finally, uh, I will be. Wait, let's see. Okay, long run rural road. <laughs> see you later. Yeah. The deep yeah. dive. I think that's it until sometime, <laughs> uh, uh, until something new comes up in November. But hey, I love talking to everyone out there. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check out the the Long Line Railroad. Check out MCU later. That's only on the cafe. So you, I think first episode is going to be free, Karen. The but first one's always s- free. <laughs> s- sign up for the cafe. You get the, you know, me, Rich Fan, Karen Peterson down the line, one of the episodes a slew of wonderful uh, guest contributors to MCU later. So we'll be talking about Loki season two. Uh, and yeah, maybe we'll be, we'll be reviewing the Marvels movie when that comes out. So uh, looking forward to all the MCU later content and uh, yeah. Hey, everyone out there, enjoy your Halloween. Uh, and remember, check your candy. Don't take candy from houses with like uh dodgy uh, and, and, and from dodgy people if they open the door and they seem like a little off maybe don't accept their candy just my stay away from people. sketchy trucks with people offering candy as well uh, what kind of trucks white sketchy looking vans with people offering you candy yeah that goes not just for kids but all the, that's adults too like that's you don't know in general. <laughs> as people in general kids and adults be careful out there have fun halloween but be careful as well okay so until next time for karen peterson i'm wh park and uh we will see you all next time and until then goodbye